Good morning, everyone. We need to finish reviewing our exercise. Hopefully we do that today and you can apply this to next projects. So in the previous lecture, we were reviewing this scenario. Uh, we put together several patterns, factory, chain of responsibility, decoration. I give you in the slides, the source code for each of them and the combination. You review the main, I give you the main one week ago for your homework. Uh, we review in which part of the main each of the elements of the different patterns are, how they are created and connected. We have the opportunity to review each of the different classes that are involved for each of the patterns, uh, the factory, the product, the product that, as you notice, is an intersection with the decoration because the product is the one that we want to decorate these bowls and the envelopes and the boxes. The chain of responsibilities and the two type of handlers, the handler that is going to be connected with other handlers that is going to do something, that is going to have actions in the methods, and the handler that go at the end, the one that is the last one in the line, the last one to receive the package. And that one is used the last possible action, like the default in a switch case statement. We review this, uh, the decoration. This is part of the product, the gift, the bow. This is half of the decoration pattern. The other half, the decorators, uh, the after class or interface to define the decorators. Uh, the decoration is a child of the same parent that the product, the single product with these double relationships, inheritance and aggregation. And then you can create childs from that one. And those decorations are the extra action or the extra information that you want to put in the original one. Uh, in this case, we play with this idea of the original one, like this one, and the decoration just this, that there is no other thing like use messages. Uh, we can put data, we can put actions. In the past, the examples that you did with draw, you draw something on the screen, more complex when you apply decorations, more simple when you play with the single class. This is my single class, use the structure. Finally, uh, I didn't have the opportunity to review the previous lecture, but hopefully you did by yourselves. It's like we have an observer and we put observable, the last element in the chain. That guy. And at this point, hopefully for your final exam, you know, if you want to do something observable using the Java API, two things to do. This is one, the inheritance, the connection with what you want to be observable and the call to this method. The most important one, the notification. If you are observable, you need to do an inheritance and in some point, in some method, some action that you do, or several, you call this notify. That is the point in which you are going to let the observers know that you did something important. This is observable and we create this other class, separate the observer, uh, the supervisor. For your exam, actions to do in order to create an observer. The implementation, again, assuming that we're using the Java API, if not, we need to provide the observer and observable class, but just using the API and implementation. And here for the observer, we need to provide a method update. Just like you create methods, action listeners, when you want to work with listeners to listen events in the graphical user interface here, you method update the implementation of observer and whatever action you need to do is going to happen here inside. In this case, in the problem that I described to you, the only thing that I ask you to do is to count how many times this 
last element in the line receive a package. How many lines that element execute its method handling or handler, whatever. We put the notify in that method. When that notify run, call this method. And the only thing happening in this method is incrementing a counter. So we need a counter, obviously. Uh, is Java, so by default, this integer variable is going to be equal to zero. Java help us with that automatic initialization of the values. We increase the value every time that this method of the is called. This is called when I am observing what I consider important in the other class. And that's it. Everything else, printing, when the supervisor is born, uh, a printing the constructor, a method used to get the value for the variable, it could be get counter, used to close the story, report, and printing a long message for you. And well, the important thing to print the value of that variable. Three things in the observer, three things in the observable, uh, very straightforward, similar with the other patterns. And what we have is our story working. This is story. Now, what happened if I ask you to do more? You already finished with everything that is shown here, except this part. You know what? Because I know that you already have this working, I want an extension. I want to modify the software. I am talking about extensibility, modificability in your software. The customer can ask for more, for an extra thing. After the customer see the application working, is okay, this is working, this is great. I have a new idea and I have a new idea and I want you to add something. In this scenario, I have two ideas. Your help to put those two new ideas in this software. And I am not going to ask you to do it. Don't worry, it's not an assignment or something like that. It's just if you are following the previous three lectures, four lectures, uh, you should be able to answer something like this, like in an exam, like in a project that is one hour, a quiz. Test yourself. Think about the solution and check if you are able to do it, to follow what I am going to do. Number one, you know what? Okay, I have this factory doing elements and I have these elements that go to this line and I have the line inserting the objects in the corrections. That's it. I really didn't think about what to do with the objects. It's like, well, they are put in a box or in an envelope. I add some elements to these objects. And then what? What is the next thing to do? What if I ask you, well, just imagine that these guys are working and they do what they need to do put the object inside of something. And then they put the object, put what they did, this bone inside of the box or inside of the envelope, whatever, in a bin, in this place. And you know what? For all of them, I want to be clear that there is only one bin. There is only one place in which you can put the balls and whatever decoration you put in the ball. Think about this guy, even though I am talking about a bean for a gift, but think about that one is your repository for the data. Uh, it could be your database. It could be your connection to the cloud. It could be the connection to a local file in which you are going to store something Usually you store the objects, the data in one place. It's not like each object have a database or each object have a file. There is a common place and it's a very common action 
that you finish some process, you finish some calculations, you have results. And what you want to do is to put your results in that particular place. In my story, is the bean for the gift. What could be the best way to program this in the program that we already have? What could be the best way to add this part of the story in the source code that we already create for everything else? Yes, thank you, Jacob. Singleton. Hopefully right now, it's like when you listen your customer telling you that something is unique, something is going to be only one. We're talking about the singleton pattern, period. We need a singleton, bye. And if I am talking here about a bin, uh, it is clear for you. We need a bin class maybe, and that bin class needs to be a singleton. And we already know the pattern for singleton. We need the elements that we need to put in that class in order for that class to be a bin. Step number one. Step number two, you know what? We need to connect this bin with the users. We need to have a connection between the class that I am going to do, that is going to be a singleton, that is going to store the data with these classes that are going to use that. And hopefully you agree with me these two guys in the story are two classes. We need to connect the new class with these two. And if we're talking about they are going to use the bin, automatically you know which is going to be the connection. Using association. My expectation, guys, right now, you're visualizing the class diagram here and you're looking a new class and two arrows that are going to go out of my handlers, handler with envelope, handler with box, and they are using the new one that I am going to create. And moreover, the new one is going to be, <clears throat> sorry, a singleton. Okay, Visualiz visualizing the class, the diagram, could be easy, but what about the source code? How many times do I need to do the programming of this? How hard is to do the programming of this? Well, what do you think about something like this? Something like this. Uh, you are asking me to do a new class. Yeah. Bin. Okay, you are asking me to be that one, a singleton. Which are the key elements for a singleton? The class need to inherit something or implement something. Is the pattern singleton related with inheritance somehow? And hopefully you remember is not the case. The singleton, the template is just one box. One thing is one of the few patterns that is not using inheritance. No inheritance here. Which are the key elements for the singleton? How do we create a singleton? I hope you remember three things. Number one, the beginning. We need to cancel the constructor. You remember that one, right? You are going to identify this class to be a singleton there. The constructor, the method with the same name that the class private. This is something special. Second, is a class that one of the variables, one of the variables in this class is going to be static and is going to be from the same type of the class. The name can be whatever you want. Uh, I am using this one from the template used to make the match that you follow my description here. The name could be whatever. Second element. Finally, if I have a variable, I need a getter. Um, the signature of the singleton. Hopefully at this point, this is in your memory. At this point, you think about the instance, the get instance, and inside of the get instance, this if else condition, checking if the instance exists, if null or not. If it's null, create a new one. Call the constructor. And hopefully at this point is clear 
that the constructor is private, cannot be used outside, but you can use it inside. These elements, these three points are your singleton. Those three points make the bin unique. Now, the second part of the problem is, this is the template, but now I need to solve the problem. And you are asking me for a bin that is unique, but you are telling me that that one is going to store information. In a different problem, I can ask you for this one to send the data to the cloud. We can talk about that later. But right now, or send the data to the database, but right now we just store the data, keep the data there in the memory. What I am just asking here is well, add the data to a data structure. Add the data to a data structure. I need to add more variables. I need to add more methods. I already finished with the template for the singleton. Whatever else I add is for the functionality. My functionality, a data structure, that stack is not because the singleton, it's not because the connections, is for the actions, the activity, the reason for this class to exist. Store the data, I am using a stack. And if I have a data structure, well, I need a method to add the data. And probably a good idea, at least for my problem, is if I have the data, in some point I need to show the data. Someone is going to ask me to print the data maybe. Two methods that work with the data. They are not part of the singleton template. They are functionality. Now, I am still using polymorphic behavior. I am still taking advantage of the interfaces that we create. If you notice, I am creating a data structure. To the data structure, they are going to send me balls in boxes. They are going to send me balls in envelopes. And I didn't connect this guy, but if I connect this guy, they are going to send me balls alone. So there are three different objects involved in this stack in this container. What I do? Well, use the parent. The parent is GIF, right? It's an interface, doesn't matter, it's the parent. When you create a data structure and the data structure is to store objects from the parent type, you can store any of the child's. I can store the ball or I can store the box. The box have inside a ball. I have a stack of any of my objects with or without decoration. The data structure for GIF, the parameter here, GIF, and use the connection with the add in the data structure. For the printing, similar idea. I can do an iteration <clears throat> and use call the method. I have a method print in GIF for the envelope and for the box. Just call them. And you know what? When you run this, you're going to have on the screen printed those messages that we have before. I am a box or I am an envelope and I have inside this box. The full description, the decoration and the original object, both are going to work because they are running this common operation, the printing. You can have more than one operation. Done. I have my singleton. I have my container. Moreover, I can add things to the container and check what the container has. Finally, the connection, right? I need to connect things. Connecting things. Number one, for the addition. For the addition, these two classes. I didn't put the full code here, but can you agree with me that the only thing that I need to do to run the method add is this. Big advantage of the singleton. You are not going to create an object. You do not need to create an object. The only thing that you need to do to use the singleton, name of the class dot get instance. 
in any place, in any of the classes that we have right now, in any of the methods, we can write bin.get instance and automatically we have access to that unique element in the system, to the bin, to the connection to the database, to the file. That line in any place give you access to this unique resource. Obviously, we're going to put this inside of these handlers. We have access to the bin. We're going to call the method add. And we're going to send the box. Or we're going to send the envelope. That is what I want to do, right? These handlers, whatever they did inside of the container, the bin. These two lines, I just want to be sure. If I go back and I show you the handlers, the chain of responsibility, those two lines Those points, when you are handling a request, when the condition is true, when it's your turn to work, when you create this box and add the GIF, or when you create this envelope and add the GIF here, in those circles, you can replace that, that is just printing the element for the line that I show you, bin dot get instance. And in those classes, you get access to the bin. And then add, box is your variable here, the one that you create, the one that you use to decorate the object that you receive, or envelope here. And with that, I have the chain of responsibility, these handlers inserting data to a common bin, to a singleton bin. And obviously, I can do the same in the main. If you think about the main, uh, maybe after your observer, you can do something like this. Something like this, get access to the instance and these guys add. In the main, your main, maybe what you want to do is call the method print, this one, in the bin. And what, what you're going to have is the main printing all the objects. That's it. Yeah. Probably, remember, each pattern solve a particular problem in a different way. Uh, and I am sure that the problem that Observer is solving is a problem that you have experienced several times. And I am pretty sure that also the problem that is solving the singleton is something that you have experienced several times in the problems or in the system that you have been required to do. So solutions, solutions that you can reuse in different ways. Hopefully this is simple, this is easy, a new pattern, a new functionality. Now I have all the data that I am creating, that I am modifying, store one, create the data, two, work with the data, three, store the data. Good. You know what? Almost done. One more thing. I have this process of creating data, working with the data, storing the data. I do not have an interface for the user. Everything that is happening in this program is text-based, is a console. Uh, the users do not like that. My program, this program is working. It's showing me something on the screen. I share with you the output. Yeah, it's working. I have this piece of software, wonderful, great. Uh, creating objects, working with the objects, storing the objects. Uh, the user don't care. For a user, you need to add a graphical user interface, right? So if I ask you, to move this piece of software to something with a graphical user interface. Two things. Number one, 
uh, some people is going to start from scratch doing a new program with the same functionality, but a complete new version, because now they need to do a graphical user interface for the program. Bad idea. What happened with the reuse? What happened with the extensibility, modificability, and so on? What can we do to add a graphical user interface? And I want to make a graphical user interface that is very trivial, simple. Uh, what happened if I want a graphical user interface that number one, I can put three buttons. And now instead of having this for loop creating 10 times objects, I really want to click here. And when I click there, the action is that the, the factory work one time. So if I want 10 objects, well, I can click 10 times and I will have 10 objects. So the action of creation of the object, I do not want that connected with an infinite for loop or with a timer or with something that is internal to the system. I want that connected with the user asking for the action to happen. And following the same idea, you know what? This bin showing me what the bin have inside, the printing, I do not want that to happen inside of the main at the end of the program. I want the bin to show what there is inside when I click this particular bottom there. And similar with the supervisor, I want a report of the supervisor when I ask for that. Another click here. I am giving you a very trivial graphical user interface. Changing this to a menu and adding complex elements is a different part of the story. It's working more here. What I care right now is what can I do to connect something like this, all these graphical elements with the program that I already have down. And particularly with my picture, I am trying to show you that there are three things that I need to connect. Only three things. I can reuse everything that I have. And I need to care about three points in which I am going to interact with that functionality. And somehow I need to worry about the results going back to the graphical user interface. And for now, my only concern is I am going to receive the information and I can process the information and show a very fancy group of elements, colors, and so on. Even I can draw the balls with the envelopes if I want. For now, the only thing that I am going to do is to show the messages in a text area. Again, I have the information. Later, I can do an update of the graphical user interface. My concern is only for the version one, the connections. The connections down and the connections up to get the data. What can I do? Well, what can I do? Number one, hopefully you agree with me. Uh, I need to create this class. It's a new class. Uh, probably I could modify the main because now main is not going to be there doing all these things and printing things. Now main, maybe, is going to be there. I can modify the main or I can create another class that is going to be connected with main. There are two options. Uh, both are good options. I am going to follow the first one just because no reason in particular. I am modified. I am going to modify the main. Modifying the main. What I need to do step by step. Number one, if I want a graphical user interface, the first thing that I need, all those things, libraries. Libraries, not only for the graphical user interface, but libraries also for using the observer pattern with graphical elements. Oh, those things call it events. Those things call it listeners. I am going to be using listeners. And listeners 
are my connection between the graphical interface and the action that I already have implemented. Good. If I need them, not only the libraries, but also extend and implement. Extend JFrame in order to be able to create graphical elements and implement the listener in order to control the events. I need those two things. Now, moving forward, you know what? Uh, I need to think about my graphical elements. How many of those graphical elements and what I show you here are this one and this one, maybe a panel there. How many of those graphical elements, the bottoms, the text areas, uh, the panels, how many of them are going to be used by more than one method? Which of them need to be available for more than one user, user method? All of them or only a few of them? That is the question that you ask when you are deciding which variables are going to be global. The J bottoms, they need to be available for several different methods. And my answer is no, they need to be available for the user. The methods are not going to use the J bottoms. The text area, the text area needs to be available for more than one method. And in this point, hopefully you agree with me. Yes. Why? because there are going to be different places, different sources of information that are going to want to put data there, at least in a first solution. There are several arrows, there are several messages, and I want to put them inside of this particular guy, inside of this particular element. In a first version, in a first iteration of the software, that is the only one that I can justify to be an attribute, to be a global variable inside of my class. I think several people is going to use this guy. So I put this guy outside of any method. All the others are going to be inside of something, inside of the method that need them, the panels, the bottoms, and so on. What else? Well, I still need all of this, my factory, my handler, everything that is my team for the functionality. Moreover, if I think about the main, now that main that was doing everything in the console, now that main is used, create an object main. So you're going to call a constructor. We need to review the constructor, give a size to the window and make the window visible, done. That is my main. Okay, so you need listeners, you need a frame, uh, you're going to keep everything that you have before, you're going to add this global text area. And now the main is used creating an object main, giving size and make it visible. Yeah. The constructor, the constructor is the next point. Well, constructor, what is happening in the constructor? In the constructor, well, everything that needs to be constructed, everything that needs to be assembled. One of the things that I need to construct, one of the things that I need to build, the connection between my actors, the connection between my elements. Which elements need to be connected? The observer and the observable, and the chain of responsibilities. I need to connect all the guys that are working in the production line. The constructor, step one, connect my objects. Well, second thing, the most important of the things for this constructor in a frame, Create the graphical user interface. Create the graphical user interface. If you review all of those lines, the only thing that is happening is the corrector pattern working. The corrector pattern working with elements from the Java API. You are creating several J bottoms. You are creating text areas, you're creating panels, and you have a frame. And the only thing that you're doing is decorating things, decorating the widgets with panels, and then the panels with the frame. You are adding things, decorator working 
with those elements. Moreover, listeners working. If you check this, this, and this, we are adding listeners to your B1, B2, B3, the one for the click. Add action listener, observer pattern working, not with your classes, with the Java API. It's like the add observer. I am adding an observer, an observer to the graphical elements, to the clicks. That observer is going to be this same object. I am observing myself. I am going to be the observer of three bottoms that I have inside. That is what you are doing. Observer of the correct decorated elements. No problem. Everything fine. Uh, adding thing to the screen, setting the layout, done. Constructor, everything is constructed. Everything is built. Next step, if I am using observer, if I am using listeners, I need to provide the update method. Well, for the listeners, the name of the method is not update. Action perform. That is the update, right? Action perform. OK, let's move forward. My action perform method. What is going to happen in the action perform method? Well, it's exactly the same method. It's exactly the same observer that I put for one, two, three elements. So any of them, something happened, they, the three of them, are going to notify to the same observer, to the same method action performed. The method need to do something in order to identify which one was the one that received the click. You do that with a condition. You will notice if, 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 if. What I can do to identify which one was the one hit? Well, uh, you receive as a parameter the observable. Wait, the listeners in Java, they call action event instead of observable. No problem. That is the object that represent who received the action. And that guy have a getter, get the source. And that one give you the particular object which you need to cast to the particular data type. In this case, you know that this is a bottom, which have also a method for getting the action command. The action command is the text that you put here, the comment, the text, produce observer bin. I do this to get a string, and then that string I can compare with this or this or this, and I know which is the widget that was hit. I am pretty sure that you remember those lines. Copy paste those lines in the previous version where in the main. Remove those lines from the main and put those lines here. And now, instead of the main running at a for loop 10 times, now those lines, the ones that call the factory, the ones that maybe print something or send that something to the handler. Now they are here. And because they are here, now they are executed when something happened in the graphical user interface. Now they are executed when the user asks for that particular functionality. The observer. When the click was in the second bottom, Call the report in the supervisor. What the, about the last one? Get your singleton and call the print. What else? Nothing else. That's it. That is what I need to do. 
Uh, did you notice that basically in five minutes, we move from a console application to a graphical application? And the only thing that we did was like three or four things. We really didn't change anything in the functionality. We care about the connections only. And the connections, really, uh, listeners. Listeners, they are going to receive a fancy name. They are the controllers. Uh, you have a graphical user interface that is going to receive a fancy name, your view. Your view give you these graphical elements. Your view connect with your controller using the observer pattern, the listeners. Your controllers know what do you want according with what did you do with the elements in the view. Finally, what we are doing is these controllers, these if else conditions that in my case is only three conditions, just imagine a complex graphical user interface. It's going to be a complex set of if else or maybe switch. And the only thing that these controllers do is to call methods that you have here in the functionality. The functionality is going to receive a fancy name also, the model. And we need to talk about this, the architecture that we're following, the high level design for this piece of software, for most of the software that you create is a model view controller, an MVC. Model view controller is an architectural pattern. More patterns, yeah, but now we need to talk about patterns in the high level, in the architectural level. We have been talking about patterns for programming, for coding, for connecting classes. Now we need to talk about patterns, about how to put together classes. What I just show you is we put together the classes for the functionality. We put together all the classes for the factory, the bin, the decorations, the envelope, the box, the data in one particular place that could become a package, a folder. And we can put in a different place the main with all the graphical components that right now, being honest, is very simple and trivial. But we can increase the complexity of that graphical user interface. However, the complexity of the graphical user interface and the complexity of the functionality, two separate things not only two different programmers, but maybe two different teams. One team of programmers can create a wonderful, beautiful graphical user interface, and they do not need to know about what is going to be the functionality. And other people, like we did here, can create functionality, and you do not need to know from where that functionality is going to be called. You just create the methods. In some point, these two things need to be connected and that connection happened in another place. In a big if else switch statement, in one of these classes, or maybe in a different one, and that is the controller, the control of the system, the control of connecting actions, events from the user, and functionality in your software. We need to talk about this. We're going to do that next week. So. Our program now with a graphical interface. Only one thing that you need to do here, my print methods, all of them have inside system out print LN, which you know is a bad idea. What could be the correct thing to have to do with my print methods? In fact, they should have a different name. When I need to print information that is inside of a class, I do not create print methods. What I do, do you remember from CSI 110 to a string? Thank you. The second thing that you need to do uh, to show the information, to send the information from the model to the graphical interface, your print methods, well, they can be two strings. They should be two strings. 
because if you change the name to to string, you can put the name of the object inside of a print statement. You can put the name of the object inside of a append instruction to the text area or set text to the text area. And what you're going to have inside is the message that you want the object to create. So to string help you to be independent from the platform. All the times that I use system out in the lane, I was connected, be dependent of a console application. If I remove those and I put two strings, now I can call the two string from the console or from the graphical user interface. And that's it. Good. Well, you're going to call the two string. The two string method is defined in the model. The two string is in the classes that are down here. Those classes are going to have two strings, but you are going to call the two string uh, when you put information here when you insert information into the text area. Uh, for instance, uh, every time that I click here, the bin, I click there. And what is going to happen there is that I am going to call my action perform here, and I am going to e execute this code here. Inside of this code here, uh, instead of this, what I am going to do is, well, the text area, Remember that I put text area as a global variable, so I have access here. And then I am going to call a method. Uh, the method could be set text. So I am going to put some text in the text area that is global. And the text that I want to put here inside is going to be something, a string. And that string should be the call to this. And my point is, if you have the method to string, automatically this is going to be calling the method to string. The object, when you want the string, is going to call the to string method automatically. Remember, the to string method is basically making this print returning a string. So if you think about this print returning a string, you call here print, and you have here the value. And then what you do with the value is to send the value to the set text of the text area, so the value go to the text area. Uh, when you put the name to a string, you are avoiding to call the method because the method cap is going to call itself and give you the string that you want. In fact, I can put this inside here as a parameter for the text and it's going to call to a string. That is. That's it regarding this example. Homework for you. Review these classes in Java. We're going to start playing with them and with the architecture and with the design review the class socket, server socket, thread, runnable. And with those, we're going to be playing in the following weeks. Thank you.